So I had a interesting like conversation with my dad, who is um, I'm first generation Nigerian American. So my dad, both my parents were born in Nigeria. So um, he moved to this country in like the 80s, and I remember we used to do a lot of like cross country trips. Um, when I was younger, like in the 90s. And I remember him telling me, you know, um, within like the recent weeks, it sort of came back to him. He's like, yeah, when we went to Atlanta in like 95, you know, he was like, I couldn't stop anywhere. He's like, you know, I I made a conscious effort to only stop in in bigger cities because I knew we wouldn't be safe if we just stopped, you know, in the middle of nowhere, South Carolina or North Carolina, driving from, you know, the DC metropolitan area to Atlanta. And it's interesting because yesterday, um, you know, my older brother, who is a 33 year old black man, is moving back to Maryland from California. And I remember my dad asking me like, oh, have you heard from your brother today? You know, he's been it's like kind of taking like a week long trip, I guess, across the country to bring um, his stuff back. And, you know, my dad was kind of like quizzing me about if I talked and I was like, yeah, I spoke to him. And, and then I realized a couple hours later, um, that I think my dad was just worried, you know, like similar to how he was worried in 1995 that he couldn't stop anywhere. He was worried because my brother said he was going to be driving through Kentucky. And 20 years later, the sentiment is still the same, you know, like just kind of worried. You shouldn't stop anywhere. You're a 30 something year old black man. You could get shot and killed or someone could sit on your neck for eight minutes and 40 something seconds for whatever reason, you know, and it's it's crazy, ironic, but it's like the world we live in where 20 years removed, nothing has changed, but it's kind of like, you know, of course nothing's changed. Not, not enough progress in my mind has been made since, you know, the civil rights movement and my parents are in their 60s, you know, and there's a lot of stuff that has not changed in so many people's lifetimes here in the United States. So it's just, it's an interesting space to be in right now as a black woman, as a black woman who has like four brothers. I'm an only girl. So it's always kind of this sort of thing that's always been in the back of our heads in my family that, you know, there are four men, four black men in my household. How do they navigate this world? And it's interesting because I live with them and we share things, but like I can never really understand the space that it's like how, how they move through the world as black men always feeling like, you know, they could be killed at any second. And it's really been an interesting time for me, not only as a black person in the United States, but like as a black person in the United States in medical school right now, like a lot of my colleagues, I'm studying for step one and it was, it's been trying, definitely. Um, you know, step one study period was supposed to be like five weeks and um, I can definitely say that in the beginning of my step studying, I was doing like 13 hour days and it took a significant toll on me. Um, but the one thing I held on to was like, you know, okay, just push through, you'll be done in like X more amount of weeks and then you know, COVID-19, um, you know, came and everything sort of stopped. And and it really took a toll on me initially, just like trying to sort of focus on studying and just hearing about so many people being affected by COVID. It, it, really, it really shook me. Um, and then, you know, school sort of like started getting postponed and and more so than that, you know, my initial five week study period has now become a four month sort of marathon that I'm trying to push through. Um, and with all of that, you know, now there's so many more instances of just racial injustice in this country. And it's been so challenging for me to stay focused. I'm a person who comes from a family that is fairly civically minded, you know, and, and I'm really always interested in current events. I read the news every day um, and it always is important to me, not just, not just what is going on around me, but around, immediately around me, excuse me, but all over the world. So that's why I was, I feel like I was kind of so affected by COVID even before it had reached the United States. And, you know, just from reading the news, I was like, it's inevitable, it's gonna hit. Hopefully we're prepared. And obviously the United States was woefully underprepared for everything that happened. Um, and that is still happening, to be quite honest. And and then 
with Breonna Taylor and George Floyd and Ahmaud Aubrey, and I have at this point turned off all my social media. I can't look at social media. Um, it has become really challenging for me to stay focused on my goal of, you know, achieving a successful, by my standards, a successful step one score while also, you know, sort of being in the world, which is really frustrating for me. And I, every day I'm sort of trying to battle with that. Um, you know, I, I don't like watching the videos of people being killed. And I, after several, after about a week or two of hearing everything and, and seeing still shots of um, Ahmaud Aubrey, I watched the video and I remember this, the feeling I got when I watched the video, it immediately sort of made my heart flutter because you saw the, sh the shot where this young man's life was taken from him and someone caught that on video and watched that happen. So when this young man was chased down while he was jogging, something that I do, and people just didn't think that he, they just thought he was someone he wasn't apparently, and that warranted his life being taken from, taken from him. And I still haven't watched the George Floyd video. I don't really think I can. You know, the Maude Aubrey video, you know, in an ironically, in an ironic way, it was short, you know, so I could, you know, sort of soldier through that, even though just the short clip of it was still, it shook me and it definitely distracted me for the entire day. But for someone to videotape a police officer sitting on the neck, kneeling on the neck of a man for eight minutes and 46 seconds, and I don't think I can watch the video of someone's life being drained from their eyes. I, I just, I don't think I can. And, you know, I have really battled with the, with the idea of going to protest um, because for me, you know, I'm trying to be less stressed, I guess. And it's really stressful to feel like you're in a situation in this country where every few weeks, someone that looks like you, that could be you to be quite honest, um, is ending up dead for no other reason than the police thought that person needed to be killed or some you know civilian decided that you looked like a burglar and it was their place to take your life you know it's it's challenging to feel like every time these situations happen from Tamir Rice to Trayvon Martin to Ahmaud Arbery to George Floyd it's challenging to see that any change is being done. And I'm really happy that people are mobilizing and that Black Lives Matter is not something that, you know, is getting banned, you know, people are getting banned from their jobs and their careers for, for you know, being a part of that movement. It's something that a lot of Americans, black or white, are deciding that, you know, they wanna be more informed about what that movement stands for and why it's not just about, you know, kneeling that it's so much more than that. And really putting a spotlight on the fact that racial injustice in this country is a systemic issue. It's a public health issue and it is all around us. It doesn't matter if you live in the, the white suburbs of Columbus or you live in the inner cities of Washington, DC. It, it's a problem no matter where you go. Um, and I wanna protest. I've definitely thought about it, but then, you know, I vacillate between like going to a protest and feeling like I'm with a group of people and we're unified in this one cause. And then what happens if nothing changes? Like it hasn't changed for years and decades and centuries, you know? So I'm at a place where I'm trying to be less stressed. So I, you know, turned off all my social media. Um, I'm at a place where my goal is to be the best physician that I can be so that I can pour back into my community and destroy some of these health disparities that plague people that look like me. I'll leave med school with my fourth and final degree and I'm still more likely to die in childbirth than a, than a white woman who has a high school diploma. 
and it's a sad statistic, but it is true and it's the reality. Um, so my job as a person who is in medical school, who endeavors to be a physician, who endeavors to be an OBGYN is to, you know, push through this time, um, make sure that I'm successful here so that I can pour back into my community and help people that look like me um, and crush some of these health disparities so that we don't have Ohio State senators asking if people of color are getting COVID more because they don't know how to wash their hands.